Good everyone, and welcome to TBR Data Center Business Quarterly Research Highlights and Outlook webcast outlining the recent results for Data Center Benchmark. My name is Allison Crawford, and I will be your host for today's session. In the 45 minutes, Senior Analyst Christian Perry will delve into the trends driving the results featured in the 3Q12 Data Center Benchmark to which you subscribe, followed by Q&A of these trends and how they will affect you. Before we started, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items with you. First, we're recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TRI channel. We encourage you to visit our channel to watch this presentation or any of the others that we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. Christian will address them at the end of the presentation. Or, if you'd like to set up a client inquiry for more detailed discussion, please reach out directly to Christian at the end of the webinar to set up that discussion. Third, we'll send the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the presentation. You can find the slides as well as other thought leadership pieces, other webinar decks, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash TBR under market underscore insight. Let me introduce Christian Perry, Senior Analyst on the computing team here at TBR. Chris lead on our data center research and has covered the market for more than 20 years for baseline, processor, smarting, and PC today. His insight into the operations and competitive strategies of data vendors help our clients improve their strategic go-to-market plans and performance. With that, let me hand this over to Christian. And thanks for joining everyone. So in this webinar, I'm going to discuss highlights from the TBR data center benchmark for 3Q12 includes analysis of the vendor performance across three segments, x servers, proprietary servers, and storage. As a heads up, starting with our 4Q12 benchmark that which is in early April, we will also uh, start benchmarking networking vendors as part of our overall data center coverage. So 3Q12, on a year-to-year -year basis, we saw the first segment slipping in terms of revenue. Uh, this didn't come as a huge, uh, huge surprise considering budgetary concerns with the tough economy. All server vendors are, are working uh, relatively diligently to evolve their platform so they can resonate with customer needs. For example, as data center customers require uh, increasing levels of efficiency from their hardware, vendors moving products from their server storage and networking portfolios into converged bags. And they're going to create more refined management software that helps customers control these various infrastructure planes. So from a customer perspective, these stacks are designed for quick deployment, single point of glass management, uh, and increased performance for workloads such as big data analysis, desktop infrastructure, private cloud, and others. And from a vendor perspective, Converged structure can deliver higher margins than individually sold components, and it also presents an opportunity for more ex extensive support and services contracts. Uh, storage side, we're seeing vendors navigating a crowded market by using flash and software as differentiators. These uh, work directly back to customer needs for more transparency and better performance and efficiency in their data centers. X server vendors are up against plenty of obstacles, uh, including not only the global economy, but all an increased move by customers into virtualization platforms and public cloud resources. Uh, however, the advent of, of converged infrastructure, which certainly by no means is a new concept in the data center, but rather a newly packaged set of products, is, is working that server vendors create new value propositions across your portfolios. Here's the resulting solutions provide entry into data centers across multiple technology areas, including service storage, networking, software, and services. Uh, actions and partnerships within these segments are, are paramount to ensure vendors can not only deliver a complete stack, but deliver competitive differentiation within the various layers. The, the secret sauce uh, so to speak, for many of these stacks is the management software, which not only provides a value prop uh, unique to a certain use case, uh, such as big data analysis, but also provides the vendors with the ability to create purpose-built hardware in the future that, that 
that essentially works best with that software. In essence, it changes the hardware game because the vendors in that space can start to transform into software-led vendors. And of course, as we know, that's where the high margins live. We've also identified a unique form of commoditization occurring in the marketplace around form factor that's helping to drive customer sales in this conversion infrastructure space uh, through flexibility of deployment options. Uh, as many of you know, you know, most vendors in this space provide customers with two options. So they can choose their own architecture and have the stack validated against their deployment expectations. So for example, uh, a 2,000 seat environment. And the other option is to buy a pre-configured stack that's wheeled right into the data center and ready for deployment in just days, or in some cases, even hours. So these are the two primary delivery methods that customers have come to expect. Vendors now more easily assemble converged uh, architecture from their existing hardware portfolio. So as long as the vendor has the knowledge and resources to provide validation, it will provide both options. Kind of growth leaders, Cisco and Huawei, uh, we see here on this chart there's tight competition in the x86 server market. We're seeing vendors compete aggressively to wrap their portfolios and go to market approaches uh, to some of the macroeconomic headwinds that, that we see continuing to persist. These efforts are, are really helping to gain, uh, helping the vendors to gain new customers that are migrating increasingly towards toward, uh, converged infrastructure, which we discussed, and uh, the, the other as a service delivery models. So when the economy is tough, uh, server customers look to make the most of their existing infrastructure. That's no big surprise. Uh, today, that's easier than ever with the uh, mature virtualization options that, ha that they have at hand. Um, of course, with cloud computing on a needed basis also becomes more attractive just against buying new infrastructure. And again, this all ties back to, to uh, the continuing tough economy. Uh, so partially due to these reasons, we saw x86 server revenue growth decline from 13% year-to-year in 2Q12 to 8.4% year-to-year in 3Q12. Uh, you saw Huawei on that chart. It's gaining major, major traction in the enterprise. It, it still doesn't have a, a large market share, but we expect that to grow. It has a very strong telecommunications business that it's leveraging as a running start in the enterprise, essentially undercutting other major server vendors on price while using its presence in China and uh, emerging APAC countries to establish proof points. Uh, uh, for some of its solutions. So always market presence in the Americas remains relatively small. It nonetheless uh, stands out as the top growth vendor in the region among the vendors in our benchmark. Huawei uh, is also quickly expanding its, its small data center revenue base by driving uh, synergies between existing lines of business and its new enterprise business to enable uh, this end-to-end -end solutions approach. Huawei is also applying the low price model characteristic of its traditional telco business and target, target SMBs, uh, APAC, to gain share and recognition in enterprise solutions provider. They benefit uh, from, from an advantageous cost model compared to its Western-based competitors. So large-scale large server deployments uh, now serving as the backbone for cloud infrastructure. And, and we see these opportunities uh, to boost server revenue and growth in the coming years. However, we see a growing threat in this space coming from ODMs, uh, such as Quanta, Wistron, Inventic and others, uh, which are already selling into large-scale cloud environments such as Facebook, Google, and Amazon. Now, now, the ODMs have the ability and capacity to provide custom iterations of servers for cloud providers. They also end up gaining the knowledge uh, around customer needs in this space. So, um, you know, the old behind this fire is the Open Compute Project, 
which is working to extend traditional boundaries of data center infrastructure, uh, essentially by giving customers more leeway with rack designs and, and even server designs themselves. Hello, ODMs are the first in line for these opportunities at the moment. Um, traditional server vendors such as HP, Dell, and IBM may be able to leverage their extensive OEM businesses to take advantage of similar opportunities in the market. But these, these efforts are, are essentially going to require the vendors to ensure strong lines of communication between OEM groups and the branded server groups. The server market also continues to drop in average revenue growth. Uh, the good news is that we believe that, that new server releases and updates from IBM and HP uh, uh, will help to boost the segment uh, and upcoming uh, portfolio refreshes from Oracle will also contribute to that uptick. IBM, for its part, continues to integrate Power 7 Plus processors and architecture into its prop server portfolio, uh, essentially giving customers higher frequencies and more efficiency through updates uh, to its main architecture and energy build. Key for parts fully emerged from the negation with Oracle and continues to expand its integrity line with new Itanium processors. Wyatary server market continues to decline on a quarterly revenue basis. Uh, we believe the segment faces no imminent danger of complete replacement in the data center. Um, proprietary systems, including mainframes, are so deeply entrenched in data center infrastructures that moving workloads from these systems to other platforms such as x86 is far too expensive and time consuming to justify. And migration of workloads from these systems to x86, to x86 platforms, for example, can cause plenty of problems. Um, there, there might be application and process relationships on these systems with other pieces of the IT infrastructure that aren't readily apparent when a migration begins. It's, it's no huge surprise that IBM has the largest market share in a prop server space. They've been in it a long time. The platforms are mature. Uh, and the scope of the services it provides around the portfolio are also immense. Uh, one vendor to keep an eye on, you'll see it there beside IBM, is Unisys. Uh, it, it launched its latest line of ClearPath mainframes in October. And the servers are selling relatively well, uh, in fact, better than anyone expected. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the mainframes are powered by Intel's Xeon uh, E5 processors, which we see giving Unisys an advantage on a couple of fronts. Uh, first, the, system, the systems can run Windows or Linux, which vendor the ability to sell compatible software stacks on top of, of those operating systems. Uh, and further, as Unisys continues to move all of its mainframes to the Xeon infrastructure, it's uh, basically going to be able to cut manufacturing costs. So it might not see a large boost to profits, um, but we predict that uh, Unisys will be able to increase its market share in the mainframe space. The global economy uh, continues to be shaky, of course, uh, and that certainly puts a damper on sales of high-end servers. However, there are plenty of data center customers that have been waiting on, on some of these portfolio refreshes that, that, that I discussed previously. Um, those are coming from HP. I am an Oracle. Some of them are already out. And as, as these products begin to uh, mature, we expect sales will see an uptick across the market segment. Oracle Fujitsu have plans to roll out new Spark chips in 2013. And while we expect this will dampen demand across the portfolios of each vendor in the fourth quarter, uh, chip units will pick up once the release actually occurs. Now, I've a bit about I IBM and HP, but along with Unisys, Bull, NEC, um, 
they also bear watching. Bolt doing a nice job of bundling its prop servers with storage uh, software and services. And this helps it to cultivate a message of industry-specific solutions to protect its install base and grow revenue in Europe. The, uh, for its part, is following a similar path to success by adding in software and services to vertical-specific solutions, in this case, in the APAC region. Up front, uh, product portfolios continue to shift uh, in the data center landscape as vendors move to accommodate uh, what we see as burgeoning needs around big data analysis and agile data management. So we, we believe that the current critical differentiation in the market revolves around workload-specific storage infrastructure that helps customers attain more agility with their data. MC's VSE3150 supports a transition to virtualized environments to integration with VMware vSphere and Microsoft Hyper-V. Posted strong storage revenue growth in 3Q12 at 37.3%, 29% percentage point uh, difference from the the, uh, the next highest revenue leader, which is Fujitsu. So while waiters to all sizes of, of enterprise customers with its NAS and SAN solutions, uh, which enables it to position itself as a, as a primary enterprise provider of storage infrastructure, at least in regions outside of the U.S. Huawei announced the second generation of its Ocean Store Durant Flash Array, and that puts it in direct competition with other Flash Array providers such as GreenBytes, uh, Nimbus Data, Violin, uh, NetGen, and others, uh, including ME, uh, EMC, NetApp, Dell, and other vendors that are working out to build their, they're working to, to build out their flash-based portfolios. Revenue growth dipped from zero percent year to year in 2Q12 to negative two percent in 3Q12. Uh, demand increasingly shifts towards cost-effective solutions for running cloud computing and big data requirements. Uh, continue to engage in price competition, particularly in the mid-tier. Uh, NetApp faced its second consecutive quarter of double-digit operating profit decline in 3Q12 uh, from what we see as a result of the MC's aggressive pricing in NetApp's core base of channel customers and challenges uh, of market consolidation within the, 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 the uh, storage space. Dell, for its part, uh, big news today uh, with it going private. Um, in, in 3Q12, we, we saw struggling to maintain storage momentum amid tight customer budgets and pricing press, pressures. Uh, alone storage fell 3% year to year despite new backup uh, recovery and replication solutions. Um, so released uh, enhanced NAS fiber communication capabilities and improved compellent management software offerings. As uh, some of these, these releases start to gain some traction, we expect that uh, Dell owned storage will also um, see an uptick in coming quarters. So we anticipate that storage industry demand will remain tightly aligned with technologies and solutions from driving storage optimization as customers continue to seek new means to efficiencies in a climate of weak uh, budgetary growth. Vendors will, will align their development, partnership, and go-to-market approaches to meet this evolving demand. Uh, we see this evidenced by EMC, which is a, a traditional pure play storage vendor and the lead in industry revenue that has uh, taken a number of steps during the this, this half of, of 2012 including structuring its executive ranks and forming the, uh, the pivotal initiative with VMware, uh, all combined to help EMC round out its stack. The, its moves also help to uh, expand storage beyond the traditional array to drive new efficiencies and cost savings across the IT fabric. So, 
as the server market, including both x86 and proprietary servers, uh, continues to slip into a tough economy. Some bright spots on the horizon. On the x86 side, the continued move to converge infrastructure will help vendors build a wealth of portfolios uh, around this evolving concept. So converge won't necessarily equate to more sales. It will far larger revenue opportunity across the segments tied to that box uh, to, and to those boxes, including storage, uh, networking, software, and services, including support. And um, prop server side, as we discussed, the portfolio refreshes uh, are finally here. They're still coming. Um, and, and IBM, for its part, is heavily, is, is heavily investing in, in the power platform to accommodate building use cases around cloud and big data. And these loads that are basically exploding in depth at businesses of all sizes. And of course, HP, Oracle, Unisys, and others are also working to innovate their platforms. Uh, on the software side, it's all tending closely here. Again, with Converge Infrastructure, it's all one big piece of a giant puzzle. Um, Veteran continue to innovate their platforms to help customers with workloads and specific needs. Um, that ties right into the, the store market. Um, and this is going to help vendors to approach various verticals with solutions designed to accommodate needs in bases such as healthcare and finance. If we look ahead uh, into 4Q12 and uh, in the coming quarters, again, we're going to continue to uh, have a heavy focus on converged infrastructure. Uh, we see these efforts continuing among all of the major data center vendors. Uh, and we will be releasing a data center, um, uh, a converged infrastructure landscape. This uh, will be released in uh, the second quarter of, of 2013. Uh, and it will examine what converged uh, infrastructure platforms customers are adopting, why they're adopting them, who they're buying from, and it will also examine their buying plans. Um, we'll also, we're going to continue uh, keeping a, a, a close eye on prop servers as they essentially make a comeback here. Um, we've been doing this for a couple quarters, and we continue uh, to watch it as as these these portfolio pressures help vendors um, gain traffic in the market. And software defined networking and the whole concept of software defined data center, uh, we have a very close eye on this as well. Uh, it, it certainly has an impact across all hardware segments in the data center. Uh, so that's something we will be looking at closely. So with that, we'd like to open up for questions. We've had a few come through. I'd like to encourage anyone out there that has a question for Christian to send it now. Uh, the first question we have is, converged infrastructure isn't really a new concept, so why getting so much traction now? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's certainly not a new concept. concept. Um, we've seen these all in, all in stacks for years, even before uh, Cisco's UCS. And frankly, customers have essentially been building their own stacks for years, uh, but it's it's that effort of of configuring, testing, deploying, and and managing uh, those those internal stacks that's making all these offerings from vendors a very attractive uh, proposition. Um, I, I see this as being uh, especially true for established data centers. Try to shoehorn in a, a set of hardware to accommodate a certain workload or, or even a set of workloads uh, can essentially be a big hake. But now customers have the option of, of bringing in a pre-configured stack that's ready to go and up and running in days or even hours for, for whatever uh, those customers need. It's, it's, we're all aware that the budgets are tight in today's data center, so that means time is at a big, big premium. Uh, Converge really helps to save a lot of that time. Great. Uh, 
Great. The question we have came in. Uh, do you have details on what the software use cases are for storage? Uh, from a high level perspective, um, so, you know, we're seeing companies now, uh, such as NetApp. NetApp considers itself a software-led company. Um, so it, it's it's the management around the storage. But we we're going to we expect to see uh, more use cases around big data analysis, um, the management of VDI, management of private clouds, um, being built into uh, storage devices to help uh, facilitate a more streamlined approach to data storage and the use of data that's, uh, that's, that's a, that exists on these storage devices. Um, so a lot of the effort there is going to be around management. And when I say effort, I mean vendor effort uh, in terms of, of uh, developing these, these software programs to help customers uh, more integrate storage into their um, existing environments, but also to make better use of that storage uh, as that data builds and sits um, in large capacities on, on their storage infrastructure. Okay. The question that came in, uh, can you talk more about workload-specific storage solutions? Which are the top solutions and what value do they bring? Uh, certainly big data and uh, the analysis of big data. Um, the storage of big data is is inevitable, uh, so you're gonna you're gonna deal with that capacity issue. Uh, but making use of that data um, is becoming more critical as as customers need to pay for to to, to store um, data across the, that infrastructure. So so big data analysis, making use of the data, tying it back to the business. Um, and, and seeing some real value from that data, that's certainly a, uh, a top focus of both vendors and customers. Um, all making use of storage uh, across more distributed data centers, um, that, that, so that ties into a, uh, a private or hybrid, hybrid cloud approach, um, making uh, storage infrastructures uh, more flexible and um, able to, to, uh, to, to, um, to, to facilitate the travel of data across uh, these distributed locations, mobile employees. Uh, so th there's, there's another top focus there from a workload perspective. I think those are two, um, those are, I, would, I would call those to the highest uh, priorities we see now from a storage workload perspective. Okay, the next one had come through. I didn't hear much about ARM licensees who seem to be making a lot of noise about coming into the data center. Any thoughts as to how they would become enterprise worthy and widely adopted in the near term future? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, so right now we're, we're, we're in the 32-bit stage for uh, ARM-based and Atom based um, servers and server architectures. Uh, we, we don't expect uh, huge traction in the enterprise space, space until these uh, processors are coming out in 64-bit versions because most data centers now, um, most of their architectures are 64-bit. So in order to accommodate ARM or Atom, uh, they're going to have to backtrack to 32-bit and then once 64-bit comes out, uh, they're going to have to go back up. So it's a lot of effort. Um, I, I, so right now, it's still a wait-and-see approach. I think there's, there's going to be demand once 64-bit hits. We're not going to see that for uh, probably another year. Um, so in, in the near term, uh, the traction is going to be around um, uh, event infrastructure for those 32-bit platforms, uh, also for big data analysis. Um, again, the, the, the real traction isn't going to happen until it hits 64-bit. Okay, the question is, what do you see happening in the all-flash storage arena? Will the new players continue to grow, or do you see the traditional vendors coming to play and outmaneuvering these smaller players? So what we've already seen is some of the smaller players being acquired 
by the larger players. Um, of course, so oh, many of them can be acquired before all the larger players have a, a, an all-flash play in the in the market. Um, I, it's it's we move to towards a more converged uh, approach in the data center. It's going to be tougher for the niche players to. Um, any real traction over some of the more established players such as HP and Dell and uh, IBM and, and, and certainly EMC um, because they have a huge, huge presence in the data center. They're all looking to be, aside from EMC, they're all looking to become end-to-end -end solutions providers. That's going to include uh, all flash arrays. Um, and and that, in fact, all flash arrays, we, we do anticipate there's going to be some major uptake in that space this year. Um, if players play their cards right, they could, they could, um, and that includes, that includes uh, building partnerships with some of the established players. Um, but those partnerships that are built to last, uh, we're, it's tough to say exactly how that's going to happen. Um, but they could gain they they could gain a bit of a foothold this year. This year is the year to do it if they if they want to have a space in that market and a space that lasts. Okay, uh, one question more question comes through. So if there's any additional questions, um, please send them through now. Uh, Christian, next question: Do you see converged infrastructure coming in market for Unix-based servers? Uh, to some extent, sure. Uh, that that's a real possibility. Some of these solutions are are, are aimed directly at the same workloads that prop servers handle, uh, not just big data analysis, but but really when it comes to pure processing power, uh, it, it's really pretty tough to beat the chips from IBM, Oracle, and Intel that aren't x86. I, I, I don't think that's a big surprise. Uh, not knocking x86 as Xeon certainly has come a long way. But there remains a strong market for proprietary servers. And at that point, the, we we do expect there's going to be an opportunity for hybrid converged systems that will use both x86 and non x86 technologies. Um, and this includes ARM and Atom-based chips. Uh, we're still early in the evolution here, uh, so, so there's going to be plenty of innovation along the way. Okay, the next question just came through. What do you see as the big data center disruptor in the next couple of years? It's core defined networking. That's 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 the uh, big element in the room. Uh, although people are starting to talk about that elephant now, um, it's certainly on the radar of all major data center vendors uh, because customers are seeing that as a huge value proposition. To obtaining more flexibility um, and essentially more freedom inside their their data center environments, um, you know, acquisitions are going to occur this year um, in the space. Uh, we don't know exactly who, um, but but they're going to come, uh, and it's going to give uh, some of the larger vendors the ability to to um, to stand pressure from from lower tier. Uh, SDN uh, providers that that um, could threaten, say, Cisco, who um, who has a major foothold in most data centers today. It looks like we have any other questions that have come through, but if there are any additional, uh, wait, we just got one. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to clarify. Oh, that's a comment. Never mind. Um, back to you on that. Uh, so I want to thank you, Christian, and thanks everyone for dialing in today. Um, again, if there's any additional questions, please send them through. You can follow both Christian and TBR on the Twitter handles listed here, uh, and as well as I'd like to encourage you to check out our pages on SlideShare, YouTube, and join our LinkedIn community on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, actually, as you're leaving the webinar, we are running a short two-question survey. We do like your feedback to hear how we're doing and how we can improve, because we will be using this quarter to quarter to improve our interactions with you. Um, we're going to leave the challenge, as I said, open for another couple of minutes in case there's any last minute follow-ups, requests for our conversations or questions. Otherwise, we appreciate your time and we look forward to speaking with you guys again next quarter. Have a great afternoon, everyone.
everyone.